This kind of water simulation is possible with the simulation nodes in Blender 3.6. Hello everyone, myself Kuldeep Singh. In this walkthrough tutorial, I'll show you how to do this water simulation with the floating leaves and I will also explain the water shader. So let's get start. First, I'll explain the restoring force which is the heart of this water simulation and after that I will explain the node tree for each effect. First of all, this method is applicable to any kind of mesh like plane or sphere. 2D or 3D or any type of topology like a quartz, triangles or pentagons. So for this uh, tutorial I am using the grid. Suppose this is the grid and let's focus on this uh, face. This is the center of this face and these are the uh, vertices of this face. And to calculate the force first we have to calculate the distance from this vertex to this center of this face like this. So let's call this as our distance t. Suppose uh, this vertex is displaced to a new position and we have this new distance d. Now the force is given by this relation. Uh, the force is equal to d naught the original distance minus the new distance multiplied by this vector this b a vector uh, from the vertex to the center of the face. Then it is multiplied by this strength vector which is controlling the magnitude of this force. The order of this subtraction is very important. Now suppose uh, this new distance is larger than the old distance then this term become negative and our overall force become negative or attractive and the force going to pull this vertex toward the center of this face. However if the new distance is smaller than the old distance and this terms become positive and our force become positive or repulsive. So in that case the force going to push the vertex away from the center of this face. And this is also known as a spring force or a restoring force. Uh, you can think like this, we are connecting a spring from the center of the face to each vertex of the face. And they are going to restore the position of those uh, vertex. So this is the main concept behind uh, this simulation. And okay, first I'll explain the water simulation, then I'll explain this uh, particle advector or advect particles. This is the node setup for this water simulation. Let's focus on this initial part. This is the input uh, grid for this water simulation. Keep in mind that the resolution of the input grid or the input mesh going to determine the resolution or the details of this water simulation. And after this grid I have stored the center of the face uh, using the stored node. And then I have stored the distance of each vertex from the center of the face as f center point length or the distance d naught in our annotation. And then I have initialized the velocity of these uh, grid points. Uh, this is a simulation zone. Here I am updating the velocity of the grid points and the position of these uh, grid points. So let me disconnect these for the moment. So now let's uh, focus on this part. Here I am calculating the force using that uh, formula. So this is our formula. First I have calculated the new distance using these nodes. And this is our old distance. Then I have subtracted the new distance from the old distance. And after that I have multiplied by this strength factor. Then use this as a scale for this vector. This B A vector in this formula or this vector. Because we don't need the force, we need the uh, velocity from the force. That's why this is also multiplied by a time step. And then I have added this velocity to the existing velocity of the points. And after that, I also blur this velocity. When we add the velocity from this object, it's going to be very turbulent. So I want to make slightly smooth. So that's why I have added this blur node. And using this total velocity, I have calculated the position. Again, I have multiplied by this time step to calculate the position from the velocity. Then it is used as offset to this set position node. So now if we go to this uh, rendered view, if we play the animation, we can see that there is nothing happen because all the points on their original position and the force is zero. Now let's add the interaction of this grid with this animated sphere. First, we have to get the velocity from this animated sphere by using this group node. Let's go inside this. So here I am calculating the velocity using the old and new position of the object. Uh, this is the new position of the object and this is the old position of the object. Then they are subtracted to get the displacement and after that I have divided by this time step to get the velocity. 
uh, then it is stored in this uh, stored attribute node after that uh, i have updated the position of this object so we have the velocity of this uh, sphere but we need to transfer that velocity to the grid points so that's why i have used uh, this sample nodes so i'm sampling the velocity at the point level and then transferring to the point of this grid so we have this uh, velocity in a real life the object only going to affect the water which is near about so for that i have added this fall of node to only apply the velocity near about this uh, sphere these fall of nodes are freely available on my gumroad page the link is in the video description now let's add this velocity to the existing velocity of the uh, these points and let's go to this render view and we can see that there is a trail of water as this object pass through the grid and this is the displacement of these grid points uh, we can see that uh, this object is nicely dragging the water but it's not pushing the water again in real life we can see that if there is something is solid then it should push the water by its volume so to include that effect uh, i have added this uh, node setup so we're going to use again the mesh file of node and then we're going to displace the position of the points downward or in the negative z direction are uh, using this math nodes and let's use this as our position now if we go to the start and then run the simulation we can see that it is nicely pushing this water downward and if we go to this render view we can see that there is a nice trail of water uh, behind this object now this is a uh, really nice uh, but uh, for me it is a very smooth trail i want to add the turbulent uh, to this water trail to achieve uh, that we have to add uh, the velocity from the noise or basically we have to add the turbulent velocity so in this uh, node setup i am getting the velocity from the noise then we are going to add this velocity to the velocity of this object before this fall of node why uh, because turbulence only going to appear when this object or this sphere interact with the water so now let's go to the first frame see it has turbulent motion to this uh, water trail with this you can control the details of this turbulence now we have this really nice uh, trail of water which is created by this object if you want to add the overall motion to this water or background uh, waves to this water that is really easy to achieve just add this animated noise uh, to this offset of this point so if we add this to this and then use this as the offset for these points uh, we will see that we have this background motion of the water and this object is interacting with that it is a bit slow because I'm recording but it is really fast and you can also bake this simulation in Blender 3.6 so now you have this uh, water simulation and this is the complete uh, node tree for this now let's uh, go to this advect particles so this is the complete uh, node tree so first I have uh, scattered the points on this uh, water simulation grid and then use this simulation zone to update the position of these points here i'm sampling the velocity from this grid for these points based on their position and then it is multiplied by this time step to get the position from the velocity it is added to the existing position of the points and after that i have projected this uh, the new position of the points on the this grid surface now suppose if i don't do this if i don't uh, do this you can see that uh, these points going to fly away in the air which may be uh, useful for certain effect but in this case i want these leaves should float onto the surface of the water that's why i have projected them onto the water surface let's go to this render view and you can see that they are affected by the motion of this uh, water and this section is basically for the distribution of this leaf I am slightly offsetting these leaves above the surface uh, so that there is no intersection problem while rendering this. Here I am basically offsetting these leaves along the normal of this water surface and using the same normal to align these leaves uh, to the uh, water surface. I make this vector 0 you can see that they are not perfectly aligned with the surface. See. If I increase this to 1, they are aligned with the surface. 
then i use this random rotation as well as random scale just to add some variation to these leaves and here i'm using this random factor to control the color of this uh, leaves and this is the complete a uh, node tree uh, for this advect particles onto the water surface now let's go to this uh, shader nodes for this uh, water uh, this is the node setup for the water material and it is mainly uh, controlled by this velocity mask so this is the velocity of this uh, water and i have bump up it is a strength and this is the noise texture for the foam and this noise is animated using the object coordinates and the normal of this mesh if we only use this object coordinates we can see that uh, this noise is being evolved as this object coordinates is changing but if we only go to this normal mode or normal coordinates we can see that this noise is following the water trail if we mix these coordinates by a 0.6 factor then this noise will evolve with time and also follow the water trail probably you can see that in this youtube compression uh, but it is there then i have mixed this noise color with the water color using the velocity mask so we have uh, this kind of color then it is used for this principal uh, shader and this is very important uh, because I am using EV render engine and to add a volumetric effect I am using this soft surface. It is a very subtle but it is uh, there probably you can see that. And I also control uh, the roughness of this water using this velocity mask. This is optional. Uh, this shader is for EV render engine. I can't test this in cycle on my tiny laptop. This is the complete uh, node setup for the water material node setup for the water simulation and this is the node setup for the advect particles if you want to support this channel you can buy the preset or you can support me through my patreon page so until next time happy noting bye